Hi there, my name is Danny Wood and I'm going to share with you my thoughts and ideas on marketing for the real estate industry. Now, I want to cover a lot of different ideas and I don't want you to think you should be applying all of them to your business. What I want you to do is just pick the ones that really reflect where you are right now and that will bring you to a higher level. So I want to start off by talking about uh, video. So video is actually changing the face of real estate and when I say that a lot of realtors picture they have to go out and get an HD video camera and it's going to be them who's on film and that's so far from the truth the reality is you can record anything you're looking at on your computer screen so I'm making a recording of my computer screen right now and you can see me flipping from one image to another just picture you doing that only conveying a message to either a buyer or a seller now the tool I'm using to do this with is called Snagit S-N-A G I T. It's developed by a company called TechSmith. Now that's a one-time fee of fifty dollars that they charge and there's a free version out there called Jing. J-I-N-G. Jing. Now the free version of Jing won't allow you to put videos on YouTube. The Snagit will. So that's why there's a cost behind that. Now how we use video in real estate is to give sellers feedback and to respond to buyer inquiries, to create fresh content for your websites and your uh, Facebook and Twitter, email drip plans, doing virtual area tours, team training, and so much more. So as an example, seller feedback. That's one of the biggest complaints our industry gets is because when we take a listing, most of us don't get back to the sellers. At least that's what the reports say. And so if that's the case, uh, many realtors say, well, I don't have any feedback to give them. I mean, I called all eight agents and not one of them got back to me. Well, I totally get that, but we still have to give feedback to the sellers. So picture you just going to your company's website. They all have a company website with listings on them. So just find the listing of where your home is listed for sale and hit the record button on the computer screen and make a, a video like this. Say, uh, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, it's uh, me, your realtor. I just wanted to give you a weekly update that this is your home for sale right here. Now, three days ago, these guys just got put on the market and they're $10,000 less than you. Plus, they have a finished basement. So that's real competition. We're going to have to keep an eye on them. And as you're aware, these guys were already put on the market because we use them as a, a comparable on price. Now, it's showing that it's still for sale, but it's actually sold conditional on financing. So what that means is another buyer chose this property over your property, and we feel it's because of the positioning of the marketplace. I want to follow up after you watch this video and give you a phone call, and then you stop the video. But what we just did there was we allowed the video to do the dirty work, helping to create the, the story in their head, which is the reality that they're overpriced. So when you come time for having that price reduction, price reduction conversation, it's going to be a lot easier because they've been hearing from you every week because it's easy. Every week the market is changing. New listings are on the market and solds have happened. So just make a recording letting them know that. And then we also get people who call us up on our listings. Um, so these are buyers who are calling us up. And most buyers, when they call you, they're not ready at that moment. They're really kind of just doing the information gathering and who can blame them? So help them out. So here, somebody calls me up on one of my listings. I would then go to our company website and uh, find where the listing is and then hit record on my computer screen and say, hey, Joey, thanks for your time on the phone. This is the listing that you called me up on. Now, I realize you're relocating to our area and you're going to commute to Toronto. So when you do that, this is how you would get on the highway and you're going to head in this direction. Now, during our conversation, I realized our home doesn't fit your needs 100%. So what I did was I pulled off a list of all the homes for sale in the area that do. I just want to let you know I'm working to be your realtor. If I can ever help, my contact info is below. Thanks a lot. You stop that video and then you send it off to them as an email. It's so simple using this program. Another way that we can use video in real estate, and I hope by now you can see it's not actually you being in front of a camera and getting all dressed up. It's every scenario just making a recording based on uh, the market it's going to. So this would be people are on our website, they're looking at homes for sale, and there's a form that they have to give name, phone number, and email. Well, I would just make a video based on each form. So 
if it's a house value form, go to your house value page on your own website, make a recording like this, say something like, um, hi, are you looking for uh, the current house values? We update the report every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Just fill in the form below if you want a copy of tomorrow's report, I'll be in touch. That's it. It's like a 10 second video, and you put that video, because you can embed YouTube videos on your websites, embed that video above the house value form. And then make another form for the buyer registry. So go to your website, go to where a person signs up and make a recording of, hey, are you looking for all the homes for sale in our area? Well, when you click the sign up button, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get access to all of the pictures and all the virtual tours, all the videos, maps, and more. You're going to be able to bookmark all your favorite listings and filter out all the ones you've already seen. That way, every day, you're just looking at the new ones that match your criteria. And then you stop that video. So you can see how that will encourage people to take the action you want them to take. You see, you can either drive more traffic to your website, and there's a cost in that, or you can simply convert the ones who are already there, and there's no cost in that. A lot of you do geographic farming, so picture this, a person's driving down the street in your farm area, whether it's your listing or not, they're going back to Google and typing in the name of the street, the city that they're in and a real estate related word. Well, if you do that right now, go to Google, type in one of the streets that are in your farm area and the city, and then a real estate word, like homes for sale, listings, whatever. That whole page on Google is going to be uh, full of realtors who are ahead of you, and um, they're all marketing that one address that they have, so 123 street name. Well, the good thing is for you is that in three months, four months, or however long it takes, when those homes sell, all the marketing material goes along with it. So if you make a generic video, not talking about one address in particular, but just talking about the area, you have a forever shelf life. You don't have to worry about the marketing material going away because you're not advertising one property. All you would have to do is go to Google and hit record, make a video like this, say, Hi, are you looking for houses, homes, and real estate for sale in the Coldstream Drive area of Oshawa, Ontario? While you found it, just click the link below for that, plus all uh, the house values, and then you stop that video. And in that video, I just said all the main keywords. I said, hi, are you looking for houses, homes, and real estate for sale in, and I, the other keyword is the area, Coldstream Drive in Oshawa, Ontario, and then I finish off by saying house values. Well, Google owns YouTube and Google is listening to YouTube videos, so it converts it from speech to text, and then it reads that text for the keywords. And that is one of the ways how we are getting free YouTube videos on the Google search results. I don't expect anybody to go to YouTube and start searching homes for sale, but I do expect them to go to Google. So it all ties into the same system, and now you'll get free internet traffic based on your farm area. And I just want to caution on you, you don't want to do every street, so a video for every street in your city or in your region, because uh, it's just way too many and then you won't get any views because it's very spammy and YouTube and Google will both pick up on that. However, you can target just your area. So if you do a farm area in a uh, north part of the city or central, just whatever your farm area is, you can do videos for that. <coughs> now. Team training is another way that we're using video. It used to be back in the day people would have a binder printed up with um, the team operations. For, so each department would have their roles and duties. So you have front desk people, you have buyer people, you have seller people. All these people are moving up in your company or moving out. So if you have a front desk person who uh, goes on maternity leave, well, you're going to have to retrain that next front desk person on loading the listings and doing mass email and that sort of thing. And you have buyer agents and seller agents who are all moving up and moving out. So if you have a person who moves out to go on their own or join another team, well, you're going to have to retrain that next buyer agent on this is how we add people to our follow-up system and this is how we get our internet leads. Well, instead of the cost of making a team operation manual that doesn't get updated and nobody uses, Simply, while you're showing them for the first time how to do that job, just hit the record button and now you have a step-by-step -step training tutorial showing them how to do it. It's going to both free up your time as a leader, and it's also going to give them the self-empowerment to find the answers on their own. So I want to skip to Facebook, because a lot of realtors are 
Um, they've been hearing a lot about Facebook for the last, I'd say, five years. It's been a big topic, and uh, they're still not seeing results or understanding how to do it. So let me share that with you. Eight years ago, 15 of my friends all hopped on a plane to move to Whistler, BC, and I was the only one who stayed behind to finish my education. Now, I knew I was getting into real estate, so I actually picked up the phone and I called Facebook. And they weren't a public company, so they actually answered the phone when I called. And I said, hey, Facebook, I'm getting into real estate, and when I do, I want to advertise only to my friends and family. I don't want to advertise to everybody in the world, and I don't want to abuse my wall. I just don't want to always be changing my status that, hey, look at me, I'm, I'm too busy for your referrals, right? I want to advertise where the advertising belongs and be like the local Nike of my industry. Now the guy on the phone said there's no way you can't just target your friends and family on, on Facebook. But you can. So we've all seen these ads before, right? So picture your name, your brokerage phone number and all your broker info. If you're advertising to your friends and family, you need your picture in front of the house. Otherwise they don't know it's you who's advertising, even though it says your name. Now, these are the numbers that we did. So we said, um, we're only going to target the 152 people of that realtor sphere in the local community. So not everybody, there's hundreds of thousands of people in our area. We only targeted 152. In the seven day period, those 152 people saw that ad 61 times. So that's 9,000 reminders of who he is and what he does in one week, and it only costs $7.41. Well, in traditional real estate, we're taught that if you have a database of 150 people, every month you send them a newsletter. And in that newsletter, you'll stuff an item of value, maybe fix your roof tips, which really isn't valuable at all. And uh, we send that off to 150 people. That's 150 stamps, 150 envelopes, and you're lucky if 130 people actually open it. Well, for $7, in a seven day period we reminded the people who we are and what we do 9,000 times and that's the same thing all you're trying to do is build mindshare well you can build a digital mindshare for all the people who are on Facebook and this is how we do it when you are in Facebook you can um, advertise so you go to Facebook advertising and it'll come up with a page and you set your audience within that audience we simply said who are the people in our cities that we work and are connected to and then you just put your Facebook page then it will give a small number if you don't have that who are connected to your Facebook page that number will be like hundreds of thousands as soon as you add the Facebook page it's going to limit it down to like hundreds or maybe even 50 or something and the cost is going to be really cheap so this is how Facebook advertising works we all have a profile if you have a Facebook account you have a profile on that profile it shows where you work, where you live, how old you are, if you have kids or not, if you're married, the school you went to, all the TV shows you like, books, music, video games, and more. Well because of that it all gets gathered on this page. All these ads that we see on the right are triggered off by the keywords on that page. So it, all these ads are related because I'm into real estate and technology so all everything I see is always about that. If somebody um, logs into my computer under their Facebook account, all their ads are going to change based on their age and, and who they are as a person. Well, we're advertisers too, so we can leverage that. We can use people's profile and get our ad on their page. And this is how. So in Toronto, there's over 2 million people using Facebook. That's way too many people to target. But what if you said, who are the people in Toronto that changed their status from single to engage? Well, that number went from 2 million people to 22,000. And then you have your home buyer seminar targeted at these people who are going to be buying a home in 6 to 12 months. And a lot of social media experts give you the impression that you always have to be on Facebook updating it. Well, with this type of advertising, you set it and you forget it. Because when these people go from being engaged to married, they'll no longer see your ad. However, the next group of people that become engaged, they'll start seeing your ad. So it's always fresh in the eyes of the people based on their demographic. So in this example I said who are in Toronto, that changed from single to engaged. You target your ad. Now you can also say based on language, who are the people in my city that speak this language? 27,000 as opposed to 2 million. Well that's 27,000 people that you can target that you're the realtor that can service that community. 
Now, some of you are looking at growing your teams and, and or you own a real estate brokerage. Well, the people on Facebook who are in the real estate industry say where they work. They type in, I work at this company. So you can put off a laundry list of all the brands and in general, all the people who work in real estate. And then target an ad saying something like, buy your agent needed and it's got your name, your phone number and all your broker info. A lot of agents, when they're looking at leaving their company to join another company, they don't just raise their hand and say, I'm thinking of that. So what you're doing here is you're just always letting them know that your team is growing and we're looking for talent. TV is brainwashing people on getting a deal. So what I did here is I, I put together a list of who are all the people that are brainwashed by these TV shows on fixing and flipping properties. Well, there's 8,000 of them in Toronto and now you target an ad that says fix and flip homes for sale. Well, last night they just missed out on a deal and now today they're looking at your ad. Of course they're going to click on it. You're going to get their information and possibly get a lead. So here's a free book giveaway that we did. Now, <clears throat> you can't just um, say if you buy a home with me, you'll get a free iPad or if you buy a home with me, you'll get a free home inspection. I mean, only Zucasta can do something like that. So. For the rest of the realtors, what you can do is we're allowed to give away pens and magnets and, and stuff like that. So here I said, claim your free book from Chapters in Oshawa on buying your first home by calling and there's a number. When you click on that blue text, it opens up with all the brokerage information, the office phone number, and then my rules. Now, one of my rules was that there isn't any rules that you have to work with me because if I did, that would be illegal. But we can give away pens and magnets. So it was just claim a free book. Some of them were even realtors that claimed the book. Some of them were working with people. I just gave the books away regardless of who and what. It was if you responded to this ad, you got a free book. Now, in a seven day period, 14 people claimed that book. I didn't think anybody was going to claim the book, so I had to run out to three or four different chapters to buy all these books. The good thing about this type of advertising is I didn't have to pre-buy the books. I only had to buy the books after people had taken action. And it only cost me about $23 in Facebook advertising to get the name, phone number, and email of 14 people. And then obviously I had to get the books out to them as well. So that's a more costly method, but you're also not paying unless the people take action. So unlike advertising an open house in the newspaper that has a shelf life of two days before the next paper comes out, here I'm only advertising when people claim the offer. Because in fact, 8,000 people saw that ad and only 14 of them claimed. But I didn't pay for the 8,000 who saw it. That was free advertising. A lot of you do client appreciation events. So here's a client appreciation event we did at the movies. And we had these perforated business cards that we bought from Staples. And on it, we printed tagyourself.ca. That was just a URL that we registered and then redirected to the photo album on Facebook. Now, the photographer would take your picture and then hand you this business card on it saying tagyourself.ca. And it was to, for anybody who tagged their photo got entered for a chance to win Toronto FC soccer tickets. Well, in this one photo alone, you can see all our clients there. We filled up the theater. 17 people in that one photo found where they were sitting and tagged their photo. <coughs> When a person tags their photo on Facebook, it goes out to all their friends and family. So we took an event we were already doing and then just made it more social by getting people coming back to us. So I hope I've given you some good ideas on how to leverage Facebook so that you can get more referrals from it. Now, let's since we're talking about digital marketing, I want to open up a presentation I have on just that. So let's talk about the World Wide Web and getting found with your local service. A lot of realtors get a bright idea that they're going to start doing online advertising and when they do it's going to be easy street that they can just sit back and relax and the leads will start pouring in as soon as they use their credit card to start paying. However, 30 days later at the end of the month they start to sweat because they're not seeing the results that they were hoping for. And what it comes down to is your targeting. So a typical realtor would want to target, let's say they work in Toronto. They'll go to Google, and it's called Google AdWords, and say, I'm going to advertise to all the people in Toronto. Well, if you said that, I want to advertise in Toronto on Google, this is the map that Google has for Toronto, 
which is a huge area. So if you're a realtor in this part of town and you don't want to drive out here, it makes sense for you not to advertise to the people in that area. So what you want to do is just target the neighborhoods that you want to work. You can actually target on Google Advertising just the neighborhoods that you want to work. You can also give a radius around your office, for example. So a one kilometer radius or a two kilometer radius around my office and around my home. And now you have a nice comfort zone. It doesn't make sense to attract um, leads from outside the area that you want to service. And then, so here's an example of us giving a neighborhood and you do that by telling the postal code. Well, you can also use negative postal codes. So if I was a Oshawa real estate agent, Oshawa has a real stigma and it comes from South Oshawa. So if I was paying for advertising in Oshawa, this is the map that Google has. That's all of Oshawa. Now I can give the postal codes of the areas that I don't want to be found in. So now you're reducing your cost and you're getting a higher quality because you're targeting only the areas you want to service. So here's a bigger map of all of Toronto. Instead of doing all of Toronto, just pick off the neighborhoods that you want to work. So it doesn't make sense to target all of one city, um, especially when it's a big city like Toronto or Ottawa or something like that, when you can pick off just the areas that you want to service. So this is how Google AdWords works. You tell it what the people are on. So I will advertise if a person is either using their computer or if they're using a mobile device. And the reason why you want to pick one or the other is because when they click on your ad, you know what device they're on. So if they're on a, a smartphone, you don't want to just send them to your website if your website isn't mobile friendly, right? So you, if your website isn't mobile friendly, you can exclude the mobile devices and just target the people on their computer. And you say, I'll target the people on their computer in whatever part of the world you want to target giving a key list of if they search any of these words in Google sitting at a computer in this area on this device I want to be found. Now because you know where they're sitting, what they're on and what they searched, you can make the ad that reflects exactly what they search. So if this person was paying for, uh, for homes for sale in Toronto, the ad that you would make up is homes for sale in Toronto because that's exactly what they searched. Now this other one is property. So you would make a second ad just targeting the property word. That way at least that ad, uh, word property is in the ad. So I'll show you an example in just a second. And then because you know what the ad looks like, what words they're searching and where they're sitting, you will know where to send them. So when they click on the ad, what page are they go going to land on? Well by knowing steps one, two, three, four, and five, you have a nice system of getting your ads delivered in a certain area based on the keywords, matching the keywords with what the people are looking for at that moment, and then driving them to exactly what it is they're looking for. Now, most realtors have it backwards or upside down where they say, I want to target all of Toronto, and they say, well, I don't want to miss out on anything. I want to be found for everything. So they type in every conceivable keyword that you can think of. What you want to do, especially when you're first starting off, is just lump all the keywords together. So take your big messy list and put, so here's condominium, Oshawa Ontario condominium, Oshawa townhome, Oshawa Ontario condominiums. So put all of those keywords into one bucket and then all the house value keywords in another one and all the real estate for sale keywords in another bucket because you know what they're looking for. If a person is searching at this moment Oshawa condominiums, then the page that I'm going to land them on is my Oshawa condominium page and the ad itself is going to reflect what it is they're searching. So when you have these buckets you'll have all the keywords and the varying ways of saying it. So townhomes, townhomes for sale in, Whippy townhomes for sale and you have all the different ways that a person would search townhomes. Same thing with house values so you'd have a key list of all the keywords so Oshawa house values, Oshawa house prices, Oshawa home values, Oshawa home prices, and you put all those keywords into one bucket. When you have that bucket, you can take it. So here's townhomes, and let's do an example. So we'll take the townhomes and break it down and say, when a person is at a computer, sitting in Whippy, Ontario, and they search Whippy townhomes, Whippy townhouses, townhomes for sale, or townhouse for sale, 
our ad will appear that says Whippy Townhomes for Sale, pictures, price, and description. There's a direct link to your website that has only townhomes for sale in Whippy. Now, that's a beautiful thing. You know where they're sitting. You give Google the list of what they're searching. So I don't know anywhere else where people go and say, hey, I'm looking at buying a home. All these people are in one way or another saying that. They're going to Google, finding your ad, and then searching for the listings on your website. And the cool part about it is that you can just rinse and repeat. So you create one ad, uh, a group of keywords for townhomes, then you create the ad for townhomes, and then you drive them to the right page on your website. Well, then you break it down for, okay, all the house values. Make the ad, drive them to your house value form. You already know what they're searching for, what they clicked on, so deliver them exactly what they want. And then luxury property for sale as well. So we show you step by step how to do all of this. Everything that I come across is also Google search, so that's how I, I learn, is um, everything I find, I just Google it and then implement it. Now, if you want to join our program that shows you step by step how to do this, we have an eight or nine week session that every week breaks down the different technology and then shows you step by step how to do it. So hopefully you get involved and we get in touch. Thanks.